Hi everyone, welcome to episode 6. So in the last episode we started generating this terrain mesh and currently it's very flat so we need to add in some variable to act as a multiplier for these height values. So let's head over to the mesh generator script and uh, let's just add a float height multiplier as an argument to the terrain mesh method and then over here where we're creating the vertices uh, we can just multiply this y value by the height multiplier so then if we save that and go into the map generator script we can create a public float mesh height multiplier and we can just pass that as a parameter into the generate terrain mesh call so pass in mesh height multiplier and save and let's try this out so we should now get this value to play with and uh, that seems to be working well but one problem of course is that the water is also being affected which is uh, making it look rather hilly so what we'd want to do is just add a curve so that we can specify how much the different height values should be affected by the multiplier so let's head over to the map generator and just create a public animation curve variable call this the mesh height curve so uh, in unity we should now get this little curve uh, editor that we can play around with so the values on the x-axis from 0 to 1 represent the actual height values that are stored in our map and then on the y-axis we can define what those values become in our mesh. So uh, for example if we wanted all of the values sort of between 0 and 0.4 to be completely flat as we would in the case of this water we could say add a key here bring this down and just flatten that out over there. So uh, of course this isn't actually affecting our mesh yet so we can go into the map generator and uh, pass the mesh height curve into the generate terrain mesh method as well and let's uh, add that as an argument so animation curve height curve so we'll use this value from the height map to get the corresponding value from our height curve so we can say height curve dot evaluate and pass in our height map value so that's basically the, uh, the value on the x-axis of the curve and it will return the corresponding y value. So let's save that and we can just quickly go over to the map generator and hit the generate button to see that curve come into effect. So uh, it seems like our value dipped below zero and the texture plane is showing through. So let's just be careful about that. And uh, of course we can play around with these curves a bit. Um, but I think that's looking pretty good. So the next thing I'd like to do is add in support for multiple mesh resolutions so that uh, later on when we have large maps made up of multiple meshes, uh, the sort of mesh chunks in the distance can be rendered with fewer vertices and triangles to keep the game running smoothly. Okay, so let's talk a bit about how this is going to work. So say for example we have a map with a width of 9, in other words we have a set of points from 0 to 8, then in our mesh generator we'll be looping through each of these points with an increment of 1, so let's just say i equals 1, and in this case we'd be visiting each of the points exactly once and creating a vertex at that point. Now we could simplify the mesh a bit by instead setting i equal to 2, so we skip a point each time and only create vertices at 0, 2, 4, 6, and 8. If we wanted to simplify it even further, we could use an increment of 4, in which case we'd only have vertices at 0, 4, and 8. Now of course we can't just use any value for our increment, for example if we tried to use a value of 3, we'd be creating vertices at point 0, 3, 6, and then we'd find we have no point 9 to create a vertex at, so that clearly doesn't work, and uh, we can say that i must be a factor of width minus 1. So width is 9 in this case, so i must be a factor of 8. In other words, it can be 1, 2, 4, 
or eight, but nothing else. All right, so if we're using an increment of one, then the number of vertices in our line is of course just equal to the width. But what happens when we increase the increment to say two? Well, by looking at the diagram above, we can see that we'll have five vertices in that case. And if we use a value of four for increment, then that will decrease to just three vertices. So we need a formula for working this out. It's not too hard to arrive at one. We know that i must be a factor of width minus one. So let's just divide width minus one by i and see what we get. So width minus one is eight, and let's use an i value of two. So eight over two is four, and we know that we should be getting five vertices. So let's just add one to that result. We can then test this with i equals four. So eight over four equals two, plus one equals three, and that's the correct number of vertices. So we've already found our formula. So the number of vertices per line is equal to width minus one over i plus one. It would be nice to decide on a fixed square size for our mesh chunks. So we know that when the increment is one, the total number of vertices in our mesh is equal to width times height, or in a square, of course, that's the same thing as saying width squared. Unity imposes a limit of 65,025 vertices per mesh, which means that our width must be less than or equal to 255. I'm going to settle on a width value of 241, since, as we discussed earlier, i must be a factor of width minus 1, which in this case is 240, and 240 has the nice property of being divisible by all of the even numbers from 2 to 12, which gives us a very nice range of values for i to work with. Okay, so let's go ahead and implement all of the stuff we've been talking about. So let's open up the map generator, and we're going to create a constant int for the map chunk size, which will be equal to 241 as discussed. And uh, the map width and map height have been replaced by this. So I'm just going to quickly rename these both to map chunk size so that all of the instances of it, such as uh, in these for loops, gets renamed. So I'll do the same thing here, map chunk size. That's just with command R, by the way. And then we can delete those. Okay, now let's also define a public int called level of detail. So remember, our increment value for the mesh simplification will be 1 if there's no simplification. Otherwise, it can be 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, or 12 for increasing levels of simplification. So we're going to clamp this level of detail variable in a range of 0 to 6 so that we can just multiply the level of detail by 2 to uh, to get our value for the increment, unless it's zero, of course, in which case we're going to have to manually change it to one. Let's go down here and pass the level of detail into the generate terrain mesh method. So just add in level of detail. And in the onValidate method, we no longer need to worry about the map chunk size or the map width and map height as it was originally. So just delete that. All right, so we can save and go into the mesh generator. And let's just add int level of detail as a argument here. And we can say int increment, or let's actually be more explicit. Let's call this the simplification increment, uh, or even more descriptive, the mesh simplification increment, all right is equal to the level of detail multiplied by 2. Now, as I said, if the level of detail is 0, we'll want the mesh simplification increment to be 1. Otherwise, these loops will never complete. Uh, of course, these are going to be y plus equals mesh simplification increment and x plus equals mesh simplification increment. Um, so if this is 0, so let's just use the conditional ternary operator. We can say if the level of detail is equal to zero, then, so question mark, we'll want to set the uh, simplification increment to one. Otherwise, we'll set it to level of detail times two. All right, we'll then want to figure out the number of vertices per line. So int vertices per line is equal to 
what was it again? It was the width minus one divided by the mesh simplification increment plus one. All right, so we'll pass that as the width and height into the mesh data so that it will calculate the correct number of vertices for the array. And the only other change we need to make is over here where we're creating the triangles, we've added width in a number of places, which of course before was synonymous with the number of vertices per line. But since that is no longer necessarily the case, we'll change that to be our new variable vertices per line. Okay, so now if we go into Unity, let us uh, just generate the map to get our new map size, our 241 by 241 map. And let's also just go on to the shading mode and change this to shaded wireframes so that we can see the triangles. And uh, let's experiment with the level of detail variable. So at the moment that's on zero, which means uh, no mesh simplification. And then as we increase that, we can see the mesh gets more and more simplified up to a maximum value of six. So this is the most simplified we can get. And we'll obviously use that when the camera is really far away. All right, so that's everything for this episode. I hope you've enjoyed and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.